what I'm going to do is I am going to move on with the class. Okay, so hopefully I can escape if it will let me out of this slide. There we go. Right, so I am just going to change my screen that I am sharing. So hopefully you can all see the questions here. So yeah, I just want to see and make sure I have a couple of thumbs up. I can see it on my screen, but can I just see a couple of thumbs up from the reactions, please, if everyone can see the screen. Everyone can see the questions. Brilliant, thank you, Shelley. Okay, so as, as I said, there are three questions. So each of these would be worth 16 marks individually and would, would take you about 14 minutes to do in the exam. So we're gonna go through these three tasks. Can I just ask, um, has anyone had a go at these in advance? Um, or are people just here waiting to go see the, the answers and work through them together? Have we got anyone who, who's had a go? Oh, Margot, brilliant, had a go in advance. Terrific. Okay, so those are the three, uh, three examples of questions that we'll go through. But however, what I want to do is I just want to do a little bit of, of a recap, okay? So I'm just uh, moving to a blank sheet of paper here, okay? And what I'd like to do, so I'll just move this to full screen. So I'm just going to select the pen here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, draw a little graph line down here like this and across like here, this. And here I'm going to write production in units. Okay. And here I'm going to have cost. And I'm going to draw a nice line on here, which is a certain type of cost. Now, can anybody in the chat panel tell me what type of cost that is? Or please come up. Yeah, variable costs. Brilliant. But and it's variable cost because for every single um, unit or that you increase, costs increase by the same amount each time. So therefore, if you double your production, you would double your costs. So if you move from, I'll just get my lovely laser pointer out. So if you move from here, okay, where you increase the production by three times, you would increase the cost from here up three times. So that's brilliant. Thank you very much, Laura. And thank you very much, Margot. That's variable. Okay, so here's the second question. Okay, just get back to the black pen again, get off the laser pointer. Okay, so here I'm drawing another graph. Ooh, not a very straight line, but I hope you can see it's a graph. And we have pounds again here, and we'll just put um, production again. I'm just gonna put production here. Now I've got another type of cost, okay? So this type of cost goes like this. So no matter how much you increase your production, so you can double your production again. So roughly double here. The cost will always be the same. Now, can anyone tell me what type that is? Yeah, we got a few fixed costs. Brilliant. Okay. So my next question is, okay, what is this type of cost? Okay, so we've got cost here and we've got production. Units, okay, what type of cost is this? I'll get a new, I'll get a new color just to keep it all snazzy. What type of cost is that? Yeah, mixed semi-variable, brilliant. Thank you, Kelly. And um, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, and thank you, Margot, brilliant, thank you. And Eleanor, brilliant, yeah. Mixed or semi-variable, absolutely fantastic because you've got this fixed element here Okay, and then you've got an additional variable element on top. Brilliant. There is one type of other cost that I'm not gonna talk about, okay, but that is stepped costs. Um, okay, so that they would increase, if we have a graph here, they would increase like, like so, let's just change the color. Okay, they would increase that. So they're fixed, they're fixed for a while and then they jump up then they're fixed for a while, and then they jump up and they're fixed for a while. But this uh, type of costing just determines costs in the short term. Therefore, we wouldn't really talk about fixed costs 
um, increasing very much because we're making short term decisions. So that's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so I'm just going to go on to a, a new concept now. I'll go on to a new page. Okay, so just imagine we have a, another graph, okay, like this again. Okay, now because we're measuring costs down the side, we measure them in pounds. But what else do we also measure in pounds? Well, we measure sales revenue in pounds as well. So what you could do, okay, is what you could is you could have sales revenue increasing like this, okay. And what you could do is that's if you think about that as your sales revenue. So if you have a fixed price for every every unit you sell, so again it behaves just like a variable cost. In fact, if you double your production, you double your cost. So that is the um, sales price, okay? Or sales um, turnover, or sales, it's probably revenue would be a better word, sales revenue, okay? So as you increase the number of units you sell, as you increase the production, your sales revenue increases and increases, increases. Now, what you can do, because you've, although sales revenue is money coming into the business and costs are going out of the business, what you could do, we've already seen it up here in this example here, okay, for a mixed cost, is we could then, what we could do, is we could take off one from the other. So, we can have any numbers we like here. So if we had, say, that the um, sales revenue was 10 pounds per unit. Oh, hang on, we've just got someone turning up as well. Brilliant, we've just got another person admitted. Brilliant, okay, 10 pounds per unit. Okay, and so that was the sales revenue. So that's this red element here. So the sales revenue of 10 pounds per unit. Okay, and then we said, right, we have variable costs. Variable costs of seven pounds per unit. Okay, and that's the blue line here. We can take one from the other and have a contribution. Okay, so that's a contribution. Okay, the full title should be contribution towards fixed costs, as we'll see as we've got later. But what we can do is we can take off that seven pounds of the variable costs. So we could say contribution is three pounds per unit. Okay, we'll do this in another color. Okay, we'll do this in a nice green color. So we have the 10 pounds per unit, this nice red line here. We have the seven pounds per unit, this nice blue line here. And we just take one for the other and it'll be the shallowest line of them all. And that would be the contribution at three pounds per unit. Okay, so now what I want you to think of is we've just taken off just the variable costs, okay? So if you can categorize all the costs involved in a business, because we've said it's in the short term, okay? Because we've said it's in the short term, we're saying that there's no stepped fixed costs. So we can say either all costs are fixed or all costs are variable or they're semi-variable, okay? So in which case, using the what method, if anyone can tell me what sort of method, there is a special method, a two word method, okay? There is a method that to determine, to work out which is the variable element and which is the fixed element. Can anyone tell me? High, low, brilliant. There we go, fantastic. This is great, this is great news. So what we can do is we can have a, another graph here, okay? And we can say costs, 
costs in pounds, okay, and production. And what we can say is that all the costs for the business, okay, will either be variable or they'll be fixed. So all the costs for the business can be behaved like that because you can either get the, if there are mixed costs, you can work out the fixed element and then you can work out the variable element. And you can add all the variable elements together. And if you've got lots of fixed costs, you will, you can add all, all the fixed costs together. So if you remember in this example above, what we did is we took the sales revenue here. Okay. Oh, got another person. Hi Jenny, well, welcome to welcome to the class. Actually, better be careful with the uh, GDPR, not to say too many names. Okay, so we've we had here the total sales revenue, and we just took off the variable cost. Okay. But we know in a business, we need to, to take off all the costs. We can't just take off the variable costs. We've got to account for all the costs. And we got off this line with contribution. So what, what I'm saying is, if we go to another example of another graph, okay? So here is costs, okay? And I'm drawing a line here. Now this is a very special line. So this is where the cost is equal to zero, okay? And his production. What we can say is that even when there's no production, because fixed costs are always fixed, we can take off the fixed costs first of all. So we take off the fixed costs. So we go down here to a certain level. And as we already worked out from our example above, we had this nice green line here, Okay, the sales revenue less the variable costs, as long as it's positive, will add a positive contribution. So we've started off by taking off all the fixed costs, and then we're working our way back up. 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 And at some point, we get here where we get back to zero, and this is the break even. Break even. Okay, but we want to do more than break even in a lot of examples. So we want to keep going and 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 going. And what they will ask you in the exam a lot of the time, okay, is they will ask you, how do we work out the break even point? And as we'll see, we'll go when we go through the examples, we'll say, right, we'll start off by taking away the fixed cost elements and taking us to this negative amount, if you'd like to think about it. And then what we'll do is that we'll slowly work up as we have extra contribution and get to this break-even point. And then we can go beyond this break-even point and end up in this area here, which is what we'd like to call a margin of safety. Okay, so this margin of safety is how far you are, what area, or, or how many units of production, as you can see his production here, fall to the right of this break-even point. Now, what the examiner will like to do is a very common question is, what if we increase the selling price? Well, we know that this line is selling price minus all the costs. So if all the other costs stay the same, okay, we know that the graph is gonna increase its gradient. So it will increase like that. So what's going to happen in this situation is you're going to get to the break-even point. You're going to get there earlier and you're going to have more units of production in that safe area. And if I was to, to take this all the way up so that it finished in line so that we produce the same amount, Okay, so we're producing the same amount, as you can see, for both these examples, we're producing the same amount, the line goes directly up, we're producing the same amount in both these examples. That's a very common question in the exam. So if you can think of it like this, that's a great way. And if you can think of the contribution is the rate at which you move up this graph, okay? It will be a constant slope, it will be a constant gradient, okay? So it's the rate at which you move up this graph. 
So a very high contribution would get you moving up a lot quicker, but a very low contribution would get you moving up a bit slower. And it's then just a question of how far you want to go beyond the break-even point. Okay, so the break-even point is when you cover all your fixed costs. So this is your fixed costs here at this level of cost. And then you start going into profit. So if you want to make this level of profit, two bars up, okay, you're just trying to go from this cost here. Okay, so call this 100,000 in fixed costs, 100K to 20,000 in profit. So you're just moving 120,000 up there to get to that level of profit. Now, I find this is a really good way of visualizing the problems. You all have your different ways of learning, you all have your different preferred styles, but this is my preferred style. So all I want you to do is just try and think about this as we're answering the questions. So let's go to the questions. All right. So question, uh, task seven. Um, sorry, I just don't have a sip of drink, not very successfully. Okay, just getting, I need to get the water off my screen now. <laughs> there we go, I think that's all right. Still seems to be working. Okay, so the first question is, product TR28 has a selling price of £23 per unit and a total variable cost of £15 per unit. So can somebody put in the, the chat group, what is the contribution? What is the gradient at that slope? At what rate per product does that move up? Eight, brilliant. Well done, Elliot, um, Elna. Um, well done, Ramesh, well done, Kelly. Okay, so quite right, it is eight. So we say the selling price, which is £23, minus the variable costs of £15, as we saw in the first example when I was showing those graphs, is that we have a contribution of £8 per unit. And that means in that lovely little graph I like to draw, for every unit that it moves along, it moves eight up. Okay, so the gradient is eight, if you like. So, uh, so uh, Broad's Word Limited estimates that fixed costs per quarter associated with the product are 36,000 pounds. Okay, all right. So again, just to bear this in mind, this is fixed costs per quarter. Okay, I don't, it's not asking us, Again, the examiner kind of likes to be quite sneaky and sometimes asks us the annual. Okay, I think they're just, in this case, they're just using the budgeting. So we can just stick with quarters. But keep your eye out in later questions for when they're asking for annual information rather than quarterly information. So on these lovely graphs that we draw, okay, so for the cost in unit and the production here, we're starting off at minus 36,000 here, which are the fixed costs, and we're going up at a rate of eight per unit. Per unit. And how do we get to the break-even point? Well, we say we need to travel a distance of here, so from here, 36,000, up to zero, okay? This is zero. So we need to travel a distance of 36,000 pounds, and we get there at a rate of eight pounds per unit and if anyone can do that calculation can we just have a few answers yeah thanks Ramesh thanks Elna 4,500 units brilliant okay so therefore if this is 4,500 units here then for every unit we produced and sold after that we would be increasing our profits by eight pounds. Okay, so if a, it's a bit difficult because it's so so small, but say we increased by a hundred units, so we increased by to four thousand six hundred units here, we would then have a profit, okay, of eight hundred pounds because again we're still increasing at that constant rate. So calculate the budgeted break even in pounds for project TR8. Again, it just seems to be for the quarter, so we don't need to do anything fancy with this. So all we have to do for this 
is say, look, we've got 4,500 units to break even. We're um, selling them at 23 pounds a unit, a unit. And I won't even know, oh, here, we've even got some people who've, who've put that in. Thanks, Sophia, I appreciate that one. Thanks, Ramesh and Elna, um, that's great. So yeah, completely agree with you guys that that is 103, 500. I've just got to make sure this water hasn't done too much damage to my notes. Now I can just about read what's going on. That's great. Okay, I'll try have a more successful sip of water this time. There we go. Practice makes perfect, just like in drinking water as an accountancy. So again, I urge you to do as many qu practice questions as you can. Oh, here you go. We've got another, another person wanting to join. There we go. All right. So now let's look at the next question. Complete the table below to show the budgeted margin of safety in units and the margin of, of safety percentage if Broad's word limited sells 5,000 or 6,000 units of product TR28. So we already know that once they get to 4,500 units, okay, they are safe. Okay, so every unit after that generates them a profit of eight pounds per unit. So if they were to sell 5,000 units, we know that the gap between 4,500 and 5,000 is 500 units, okay? And then I don't think it takes, yeah, and, and thank you, Sophia, as well, okay? So it's 500 units. Um, I'm not too sure about the second one, um, 5,000 units. No, it's, it's definitely 500 units, okay? Definitely 500 units, because if we look at our little graph, I'll draw it again, okay? So we've got our little graph here. We've started off at minus 36,000, okay? I will just put 1,000 in here just to make sure. At this point here, we've got to 4,500 units, okay? So that distance there along the horizontal axis is 4,500 units. It's all right, no problem, thank you. Um, so if we see that when we get to 5,000 units, 5,000 units, there's only a very small gap here of 500 units, okay? And then if we move another 1,000 units along to 6,000, the gap here is 1,500 units. So I hope, yeah, Elna's got that, brilliant. So I hope you can all see how we work, how that has worked out. If you do have any problems, please put so in the chat box. And I do appreciate that that diagram is a little small. That's why I did it at the start on those big sheets to help you try and visualize it. Okay, so what we're trying to work out then, of these 500 units, so we've got these 500 units, okay, how many of, of um, units fall in the, in the safe zone? So when, when 5,000 units are being produced, we know that 500 fall in the safe zone. So what we can do is we can say 500 divided by 5,000, oh, there's a funny mark appeared there. 500 divided by 5,000. Can anyone give me that? And the answer to that is 10%. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ramesh, and thank you, Elna. It's 10%. So without me giving you the answer to the second part, can someone put in the chat box what the answer here is? Yeah, brilliant, 25%. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sophia. I've, I've already forgotten how to pronounce your first name, so I do apologize for that. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, so, but I think, I'm, I think I'm getting Sophia right, so. Hopefully, hopefully it's, it's acceptable. So we're now saying here that 1,500 units out of the 6,000 fall in the safe zone, which if you calculate as a percentage is 25%. To get your percentages, just do this sum and then times by 100, okay? 100 being per cent meaning per 100 cent, meaning 100, which we get 25%. 
don't see anyone writing any problems in the chat box, so I'm just going to keep moving on. Like I said, there's uh, people, the same sort of um, names are coming up with the answers, but if, I, if anyone has any problems, please do just type in the chat box and we'll, we'll have a look. Okay, uh, Broad's Word Limited wishes to make, how did you get 500? Yeah, certainly, of course, Sh Shelley. So if we go, if we go, well, I wanna go, yeah, I'll go back to one of my um, other examples. Okay, so were you with us for, for this, Shelley, when we were talking, when we were talking about starting off with your fixed costs, Okay, you start off with your fixed costs, you take them off. Yeah, okay, you were here. You take off your fixed costs, so it gets you down to here, and then you increase at a certain rate. Now, in the example that we've just done, I can't remember the, the, the costs were. I'll just go back and have a look. So I'll just rub this out. Okay, so the costs were, when we did the question, in fact, I should have it on the question in front of me. So the costs were, I'll try a different colored pen. The costs were 36,000, that's what they were. So 36,000. So we started off at 36,000. And then for every one unit we moved along, so for every unit we produced, we went up eight pounds, okay? So let's just say, um, for the sake of our argument, this one square represents, okay, let, let's, say, let's say this here moves us a thousand units. Okay, so we're moving a thousand units along here. Okay, so we're moving 1,000 units. Okay, so this is 1,000 units here. Okay, what we're doing is then we'll be moving up here 1,000 units times eight pounds, which is we're moving 8,000 pounds up there. And we're saying, how far do you have to go along in units before it crosses this line, okay? Before, how do you get here, okay? How long do you have to go before you get here? And we worked out that we got here at 4,500 units. So were you happy with the part? Yeah, Elna's, Elna's tried to fit in here as well, okay? So, um, Shelley, are you happy that we got to and this question? That we got to four thousand five hundred units here for the break-even. It was an early question. Yeah, brilliant. So, are you happy that we got to four thousand five hundred units? Okay. So, we're saying how far beyond that four thousand five hundred units do we go? And this question says, will we go to five thousand units? Okay. And as Elna's kindly said in the chat, we've gone beyond that four thousand five hundred units to 5,000 units. Now, how far have we gone from 4,500 units to 5,000 units? Well, the answer is 500 units, okay? There's that extra 500 units to get from 4,500 to 5,000. Are you happy with that, Shelley? That's how we got the 500. It's that extra distance we're going beyond break-even. We're producing an extra 500 units beyond the break-even number of units. Brilliant. Great, Shelley. Okay. And here is very similar. We start off at the 4,500 and we're going all the way to 6,000. Okay. So we're going from 4,500 to 6,000. And that's how we get the one, uh, 1,500. Brilliant. And then we get the percentages. Okay. That's great. Absolutely fantastic. So let's answer the next question. So let's say, and hopefully it's starting, if you can think about it in those graphs that I was showing you at the start, we can say, right, um, Broad's, um, Broad's Word Limited wants to make a profit of 20,000. How many units of TR28 must it sell? Well, we know to break even, it's got to cover its fixed costs. So it's got to cover that first 36,000. But how far beyond that 36,000 does it go? It goes an extra 20,000. Thank you. We're getting some answers there already. It goes an extra 20,000 pounds beyond that 36,000. So these are both pounds. Okay. And if it gets there at a rate of eight pounds per unit, or eight pounds per unit, 
we quite rightly do 36,000 plus 20,000, which is 56,000. 56,000 divided by eight. Yep, there we go. Brilliant. And Ramesh has put the um, calculation in, and I quite agree. 7,000. Brilliant work, everybody. 7,000 units. You're all too quick in the chat box. Absolutely fantastic. That's what I like to hear. I like to see. Sorry, I'm not hearing you from the chat box. Okay, now let's um, do this question. Now, this is the last part of the question. Don't worry about this little text box here. It's just so it can complete the sentence. Okay, when we've copied this from the AAT website. And again, here, it's so it's the break even point will decrease and the margin of safety will stay the same. Okay, so here I'm just going to go back to my graphs that I drew at the start. Okay, so. What are we saying? Well, actually, let's read the question first. Sorry, I was a little bit too quick there. Let's read the question first. So, Broad's Word Limited increases the selling price of TR28 by one pound. So that means the, the line is gonna be steeper, okay? It's gonna be a steeper line with the contributions higher, we're covering, the, we're contributing towards those fixed costs at a quicker rate, and we're making profit once we go beyond the break-even point at a quicker rate, okay, what will be the impact on the break-even point and the margin of safety, assuming no change to the number of units sold? So again, I'd like to go back at the right time now. So what we're doing is I'll get the nice little laser pointer. We're saying this is the original situation, okay, and that last bit says the number of units remain the same, okay, so this is the original situation, but we're increasing the selling price. So we're increasing the rate at which we contribute towards the fixed costs, and then we contribute towards, towards the profit. So the break-even point is only ever going to go in this direction. Okay? So it's only ever going to get smaller. Oh, I just want to draw an arrow. I'll, I'll try it again with a, uh, with a nice... Uh, color here, here we go. So the break even point is only ever going to move in this direction. Whereas the margin of safety, so if we before look at green, this is the margin of safety. Okay. This is the nice safe area. Okay. Up to this line here where we produce a certain number of units. Okay. The margin of safety gets a whole lot bigger. Okay. So then, when we go back to this question, hopefully, if you visualize it in these terms, you can see that the answer is the top one, that the break-even point will decrease and the margin of safety will increase. Yeah. Okay. So, which is, Elna has kindly put that in as your answer. So, well done, everyone put that. I don't know if the examiner's having a breakdown here or just trying to be funny, but this one's never going to be... Uh, be the right answer. I don't know what's going on here. The breakdown point. Well, I don't know what's going on there. But again, so that that will always be the answer to this question. Okay, this top one. Fantastic. Let's move on. And next time we have one of these questions, I'm going to put it out there to the chat panel more. Okay, so I'm gradually, hopefully, going to do a bit less and less and get you guys to do a bit more and more. Okay, so let's keep going to the next next question. Okay, right. MMAC bridging session, week four, CVP, break even analysis, margin of safety, target profit, task seven style question. Okay, so here we go. Let's try and get through this one in about 14 minutes. Okay, so we'll do it roughly to time. Okay, um, oh, it's Broad's word ag again. Okay, has the following budgeted costs per unit okay so these are the per unit product ln60 has a selling price of 39 pounds per unit and the budgeted sales volume is 500,000 so if these are the costs per unit and the, so the fixed costs are 12 pounds per unit and we're thinking of selling 5,000 units can anyone tell me what the budgeted fixed overheads are. Yeah, uh, 5,000 units times 12 
equals £60,000. I absolutely agree. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, uh, Sophia. So we're saying 5,000 units, which we budget to, uh, to produce, and the fixed costs have been absorbed into this at a rate of £12 per unit. Okay. And that quite rightly comes out at £60,000. Brilliant. At this 5,000 units. Calculate the break even volume in units for LN60. So, can somebody please tell me what the contribution is? So, the key figures here are the selling price and also the total variable costs. So, can somebody tell me what the contribution is? Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Sophia. So, we're saying that we sell every unit. Yeah, brilliant. We sell every unit for £39. So we get in £39 for every unit that we sell, but we can't avoid £14 per unit. So even every time we sell one at £39, we still incur another £14 of costs. So therefore, we're only advancing our contribution by £25 each time. So the contribution, contribution is £25 per unit. Brilliant. Okay. So how, what is the break-even volume if we've got to cover this £60,000 at a rate of £25 per unit? How long till we get? Yeah, brilliant. There we go. Couldn't even finish the question. And he's even put the answer. Um, Ramesh, if you ever feel like being a tutor, I know that you know, more and more people are doing accountancy exams. So yeah, just have a word with us afterwards. And uh, sorry, that was only a joke. Um, but yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. And I, I love your working. So yeah. So we're covering this £60,000 difference, okay? So we're getting from the £60,000 fixed costs up to zero, and we're covering that distance at a rate of £25 per unit, which gives us 2,400 units. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Okay, using your answer from part B, calculate the margin of safety in units and the margin of safety percentage if Broadsword sells 4,000 units. Brilliant. So fears, there we go, done the answer. So for everyone looking at the chat box, yeah, we're saying that, I'll draw my lovely little graph that I like to, I just make sure you, you know, we've all got this. So we're starting off, I'm just gonna put it in the green. We're starting off at 60,000 pounds here, and we're going up at a rate of 25 pounds per unit. Okay, we hit the break even point. So we hit naught pounds, we get back up to naught, okay, at 2,400 units, but then we keep going on and on and on and on and on and on, okay, until we get to 4,000 units here, okay. So this is 4,000, okay, along the horizontal axis, okay. And the difference between the two, these two, I should probably use a different colored pen here. In fact, I'll even rub that out and use a different colored pen. I've got all this lovely technology available. I should really should start using it a bit more. The difference between those two um, volumes of production is 1,600. So the margin of safety is 1,600. And then the next question asks us, well, what is the margin of safety as a percentage? So what percentage of these 1,600 units Oh, sorry, what percentage of these, sorry, these 4,000 units, okay, what percentage of them are beyond the safe zone of 2,400? Well, we know that 16 or 1,600 units are safe out of the 4,000, and that comes out to, well, once you times it by 100, comes out to a percentage of 40%. Thank you, Elna. Brilliant. So we're racing through this well within 40 minutes. So I think we've only been on this about six minutes. So yeah, we're hopefully going to get to the end of this. Now, if I put the uh, answer, if I put the letters, sorry, not the answers, don't want to do that just yet. I was picking a nice, trying to pick a nice fancy colour. A, B, C, D here. And somebody, can people type in the chat box, 
what answer, what the correct answer is, just to save yourselves typing too much. I could go back to my trusty blue pen. C, brilliant. Yeah. So the break even point will decrease and the margin of safety will increase. Okay. And just for those who are following along, probably should have read out the question to go with that. The question being, okay, which is the standard question in the last one. Oh, we've just got a, a, a late entrant. Okay. If Broad's word increases the selling price of LN60 and all other costs remain the same, what impact would this have on the break even point and the margin of safety? So, what we're saying is for this example above, what if we increase the gradient? And we've gone through that a few times. So, well done, Sophia and Elna, for both saying C. So this is the last part of the question. Well, and, and again, well within this, the, the 14 minutes. So let's just cover this off and, and move to the last question. Okay. Oh dear, Broad's word. Um, well, I think it should be Broad's sword or Broad's word. Sorry, I live on the Broad's, so I'm calling it, Bro I think it's Broad's word as in a publishing company, but it could be Broad sword. I suppose it could be Broad sword. So just goes to show I get, all the pronoun pronunciations wrong. Um, so all those who, so Sophia, you can relax that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it with the questions in here as well. So I hope that's okay. Okay, so Broad's word or broad sword, whichever you'd like to call them, have now incurred an additional fixed costs of 20,000. Okay, so they've got to make an extra 20,000 pounds before they break even. Complete the table below to calculate the total number of units, broadsword or broad's word, um, must sell to, um, to cover the revised fixed cost, okay? The revised margin of safety and the revised margin of safety in sales revenue. Okay, so what we're saying is that we had the original 60,000 pounds, but now we've got to um, will these, sorry, I'm just looking at questions. Will these uh, type of questions appear in the synoptic exam? Um, probably not too much in the synoptic exam. I'm not saying no, um, because this is for management accounting costing. It, it might have something like this, but it might not be in this amount of uh, detail. So it, it, could, it could be included, um, but maybe to a, to a lesser extent. Okay, so the synoptic exam does cover from the uh, management accounting costing, but yeah, it, it might not be in this level of detail. It might just be sort of one, one part of these questions. So we've got to cover the 60,000 pounds. So back to where I was, we've got to cover the 60,000. Okay. Oh, by the way, let's just have a vote. Should it, from the rest of this, do you want me to call them broad sword or broad's word? You know, just like I said, I live in Norfolk. I know a couple of friends who work in publishing, in publishing books, and they're called something word. Can you just, someone type in the chat box, sword or word? Would you like me to call them broad sword or broad's word? Broad's word. Okay, thanks, Kelly. Mickey Mouse, word. Okay, Margot, thanks. Oh, we've got one sword and we've got one broad's word. Okay, well, Kelly was in first, so I'm going to keep calling them broad's word. Okay, so well done, Kelly. Okay, so we've got this 60,000. Okay, well, we've got two for sword now. Okay, I'm sorry, sword's been outvoted. Sorry, Kelly, uh, you know, democracy rules, sword it is. Okay, so, and I'm closing the voting now. Voting is closed. Um, oh, we did have another word. That I, oh, oh, geez. Confusion, confusion's reigning. Right, it's going to be word because I've actually spotted another word. Okay, so it's Broad's word. Okay, so they're a publishing company and they produce. Uh, books. They're love based on the uh, uh, near one of the near the Norfolk Broads. Lovely place to go over holiday, by the way, if you're thinking about holidaying in the UK um, with with lockdown restrictions coming to an end. All right, so let's get back to the question though, because we're in danger of using up our 14 minutes here. We've only got a couple of minutes left to get through this question. So I just want to make sure that we're all aware of this. So we've got the original 60,000 that we need to cover, to cover our fixed costs. But now we've got an additional, in addition to this, we've got an additional 20,000 pounds in the fixed costs. 
So we've just gone, if you think of that, that graph, we've just gone down an extra 20,000 pounds. So we've gone to 80,000, but we still get there at a rate of 25 pounds, okay, per unit. So can somebody tell me the number of units to cover the revised fixed costs? Brilliant, 3,200, and that's fantastic because I'm spilling my water earlier, I really smudged that. So it's nice to get a few, Michaela, it's nice to get a few different uh, people in and Margot, thank you very much. Okay, so without me giving you any information here, what is the revised margin of safety? Okay. And that's as a percentage. We've got a 20% there, okay. Anyone else? This is a tricky question. Anyone else brave enough to have a go? So yeah, I've, um, yeah, I've asked you quite a tricky question here. Okay, right. Let's, just, let's go back and have a look, okay. Because this does refer to an early part of the question. So it's quite tricky here because they're referring to this bit here where they're referring to the 5,000 units, okay. So we're saying that beyond 3,200 3, units, there are safe units, but we're going up to 5,000 units. So can somebody tell me how many units are in the safe zone? How many, what is the number of units in the safe zone? So we're going, starting from 3,200, where we get to zero. So remember that line crosses the break even point at zero, at 3,200, but then it goes on all the way up to 5,000, yeah, we have 1,800 units, okay, in the safe zone. And how many units do we have in total? So how many units are we considering in total that we just looked at? What's the total number of units we're considering? Just 5,000, thank you, Elna. Okay, so we do, if 1,800 of the 5,000 are in the safe zone, Okay, that's absolutely fine. Okay, yep. Um, 36%. Okay, I'll just type in the answer, then I'll go back. But yep, no problem at all. Okay. So, so Sophia, I'm going to try and stick with these graphs because I really do think it's a good way to learn what's going on. So, in this example, okay, we originally had, so this is a cost of naught here going across here and this is a cost of 60,000 remember because we're taking off the fixed costs at the start fixed costs increased by 20,000 okay so they they're now at 80,000 so we're down here we're at our starting point at no units of production so we've gone no distance along here okay no distance along there okay we're at 80,000 all right we did start off at 60,000, okay? So previously, in the previous example, we started off at 60,000 and had a contribution rate of 25 pounds per unit. But now we're going down a little bit. So we're having an extra 20,000 pounds of fixed cost. So we're still contributing at 25 pounds a unit. So we've got this parallel line, okay? That runs exactly parallel to it, which has a contribution rate of 25 pounds per unit. But what's happened, from the first question where you saw that the break even was here, was 2,400 units, okay? So the break even was 2,400 units when we started off at 60,000, okay? We're now going down to 80,000. And that's caused our break even point here to move to 3,000. 200. Okay. If I finish this question off correctly, okay, both levels of production stop here at 5,000 units. So I need to complete these lines. So the blue one does go all the way up there. The green one goes all the way up, up there as well. So what's happened is we did, so let's change the pen color again. This might take us slightly over the time for the 14 minutes, but it's important that you that we get there. So we did have this margin of safety. Okay. 
what, is it 4,000? Okay. Ah, sorry, this is if it was producing 4,000 units. So now it's producing, yeah, it's producing 5,000 units back in this. So in, in this example, sorry, I was just looking at it in this example. In this example, they actually changed it to producing 4,000 units, but in reality, they're producing 5,000 units, okay? So we're assuming no change in sales demand. So that is part of the question. Okay, so we're assuming sales demand, selling price, and all other costs remain as the budget. So we're going back to the budgeted figures. So they're changing costs around. So we previously had this margin of safety, okay, which was actually 2,600, which for anyone looking back at the previous question is a thousand more because remember they, they brought it down from 5,000 to 4,000 units. But now our margin of safety is this distance. It's this distance here. And this distance here, as was worked out, ah, brilliant. Thanks, Sophia, is what I bet, just for anyone else who wasn't understanding, is now 1,800, okay? And then we're saying, how many of these units fall in the safe zone? Okay, so I'll get another highlighter. So of these one, oh, that's the bad highlighter color to use, isn't it? That's terrible. That's not going to work. I've de de like, de deleted the wrong thing. So now I need to put that black line back in. Okay. So let's put the black line back in at naught. Okay, and now I've crossed out the 1,800. Hopefully you can all see that just about. Okay, so let's get a nice friendly yellow. Hey, yellow is not going to upset anyone. So we're saying we've got this 1,800 units there. I hope you can see that. Sorry, it's quite small. Okay, so 1,800 of these units, okay, from the break-even point, break-even point where it crosses this cost equals zero line, to 5,000 units gives us 1,800 units is this gap here. Okay, so 1,800 units fall within the safe zone and the total amount is 5,000 units. So 1,800 units are in the safe zone divided by 5,000 units in total, okay, because we're going back to that budgeted figures, gets us to 36% is the margin, um, revised margin of safety percentage, 36%. Brilliant, thanks. Thanks, Sophia, brilliant. Okay, so without me giving away any information then, what is the revised margin of safety in sales revenue? So hopefully this shouldn't be too difficult now we've worked out how many safe units we are. And we've got an answer in there, okay? And we've got 70,200, Elna, perfect. I don't, uh, or, yeah, I don't think you've submitted a, an incorrect answer all night. Absolutely fantastic. So we're saying that these 1,800 units, which are the safe units, okay? We're selling these and we're selling them at, if we go back to the question, we're selling them at 39 pounds per unit, okay, here. So what we do is we times 1,800 times by 39 pounds. And as Elna quite rightly says, and Sophia now says as well, 70,200 pounds. Absolutely brilliant. We were a little bit over our 14 minutes then, but let's try and hit it for the next one. And it's only because we, 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 you know, did a little bit extra, but we didn't miss it by much. I think we, yeah, we're about, I think we're about 18 minutes or something like that. So yeah, I think, well, maybe, maybe 20. I think we might have gone over by six minutes, but we're going to do this one. All right. We're going to do the, we're going to do it in the 14 minutes. Okay. So I'll stop drawing all my graphs and just get on with the question. Okay. So I'll put the question to the class. The central bus company, CBC, contract services department has prepared the following forecasts for two new routes, CS1 and CS22, which will be running in quarter one. Beware of the examiner being difficult. And for all those that have had Tim, he uses this brilliant phrase, RTFQ, with F usually standing for full but can mean something else if you get quite angry. Okay, so this is for one quarter, okay? But 
They're also asking on the basis of quarter one forecasts, calculate the annual figures. Okay, so can someone go for that, please? Can someone try and enter the figure in this box here? What are the annual figures? That's the important word. And for anyone, a quarter is a quarter of a year or three months. Can anyone submit an answer for that, please? 12 MC, okay, uh, Margot. Um, there's a 12 pounds marginal cost. 12, 12, M 12 months, yeah, it's the annual figures. That's all right, don't worry, we'll, we'll go through it. Okay, so the question is, okay, calculate the break even mileage. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to work out the point in which that we get back to zero. Okay, so if the fixed costs in quarter one are 16,000, okay, the costs for the year are going to be four times 16,000. Okay, and at what rate are we going up? What rate are we going up that graph? Okay, well, we know that the sales revenue given here, change my highlighter again, sales revenue is 17 pounds per mile. Okay, well, actually, they've given the contribution there anyway. So they've given the contribution as eight anyway. So we know that we need to do 16,000 times four, which 16,000 times four, to make sure I get it around my calculator, is 64,000. Should have been able to do that in my head, really, shouldn't I? Divided by eight pounds per mile, instead of we're swapping units out for miles. And as you've quite rightly got in the chat box, brilliant, 8,000 miles. And do not let that confuse you. Converting quarters here to yearly. So, and all we do is times it by four. Okay. So, can anyone t um, venture the answer to this? Let's just change it to a nice blue, friendly blue. That doesn't ruin too many colors. Can anybody that would have happy to, to submit an answer for, for that? Okay, the forecast break even revenue for CS22. Brilliant. Well done, Elna. Okay. Uh, Sophia, I just want you to watch along closely. I'm not sure what your answer is for that. I don't know if, you've, it's, if it's a mistype. The, the previous answer is 8,000. We're going to go through um, this now the forecast break even revenue. So, again, from the question, we say four lots of £14,500 okay, to get the annual figures at a contribution of £10 per mile, okay, that will get us to a number of, ah, I see what you've done here, Sophia, you've got us to 5,800 miles, but remember, RTFQ, okay, they're asking for the break-even revenue, okay, so well done for getting the number of miles, Okay, but if we're doing 5,800 miles and we're getting 18 pounds in revenue per mile, that comes out to 104,400, which Elna kindly put as an answer. 104,400. Brilliant. A revised forecast has now been produced. There is no change to either contribution per mile, but due to an improved uh, forecast, the break even points and the budgeted miles have both been revised. Okay, so we've got some revised hit figures here. Okay, so we, there is no change to the contribution per mile. That's good. Uh, but improved uh, forecast in the break even points and budgeted miles have both been revised. Okay, so we've got some better information. Let's see how this works for our question. Calculate the following figures based on the re um, revised information given. The margin of safety is how many miles? Okay. 
Okay, so we've got an answer of 800 there. Yeah, and that is quite right. Brilliant. So we're looking at the information here and we're saying the break even point is 9,000 miles. Um, but what we do is we go 800 units beyond that to 9,800. So therefore, okay, we have 800. And again, it's not us to do anything tricky with either annual or quarterly adjustments. Okay, so for uh, CS22, if someone would like to submit the answer there, RTFQ, if someone would like to go there, 21,600, yep, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Okay, so we, the break even point is 6,000. We go 1,200 miles beyond this. So we go 1,200 miles, Beyond this, at 18 pounds a mile, as Sophia knows all about, and that comes out to 21,600. So this is brilliant. We're flying through this question in plenty of time. Based on the revised forecast, calculate the margin of safety for CS21 as a percentage to two decimal places. So this one is a little bit harder, but I'll go through this with you. Okay. Oh, look at that. Elna does, Elna's just got in there straight with it. Easy for her. Brilliant. Okay. So what Elna's saying is saying, look, we've got 800 units in the safe zone, which we've already worked out in the question here. So we've got 800 units in the safe zone. But those 800 units, how much do they relate to all of the miles? Okay. So the total forecast miles, which is here. Okay. So 800 miles out of a total forecast of 9,800 miles does in fact come out at um, 0 0.0081, I think so, zero, yeah. But you've got to times it by 100, okay? I won't try and do any more maths in my head. It's been a long day, sorry. Times by 100 to get your percentage. And that does indeed come out at 8.16%. 8.16. Absolutely brilliant. Yep. Well done. Yep. Times 100. Elna's even done. Like, Elna's even putting in the. Uh, yeah. And Sophia's got there as well. Elna's even putting in the chat the calculations. Brilliant. Okay. So here we are. Final question before we wrap it up for a night. We can all go and get some dinner. Well, that's the case for me anyway, but I hope the same for you. Okay. So last question. I've got my trusty green highlighter. CBC, which is the bus company, has a target profit of £6,000 per quarter, okay, so be in mind, they might be being tricky here, so that's per quarter, and CS22, £7,000 per quarter, fixed costs remain unchanged from part A, okay, so they remain unchanged, so again, per quarter, would be 16,000 and 14,500 per quarter. Okay. The company, the company wishes to know what the annual mileage and sales will have to be to reach the target cost. Okay. So let's go through these questions. Okay. So they're asking us to convert to annual. So if anyone would like to go in for an answer, I'll just leave you a couple of minutes. Still well within our 14, but I rare we're quite over time for our revision session. So I will move on. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so what we're saying in this first example, okay, is the annual mileage to re re reach the target profit. Well, we've got to cover four lots Okay, we've got to get to four lots of the fixed costs, which is sixteen thousand pounds here. But as well as four lots of the fixed costs, we've got to get four lots of the target profit as well, which is six thousand. Okay, so four lots of uh, sixteen thousand plus six thousand, so that's four lots of twenty-two thousand. And the contribution is still 
eight pounds per unit. Okay, and if anyone would like to do that calculation, yeah, I make it as well, 11,000, brilliant. Thanks, Michaela, absolutely perfect. Would anyone like to have a go at the fight? Thanks, Sophia, as well. Would anyone like to have a go at the final one before we wrap up for the evening? That's right. It's a quite a detailed um, calculation, so I'll move on. So we know that we've got to do four lots, okay? We need to do four lots of the fixed costs. Can someone type in the chat box what the fixed costs are, please? So four lots of the fixed costs for CS22. What are the fixed costs? Scrolling back to the first question. Can someone put that in the chat box? Yeah, 14,500. Yeah, I've highlighted it quite a bit. I'll just, yeah, so four lots of 14,500. But on top of the break even, we want to go beyond the break even point and make a target profit. We want to go keep going. So what's our target profit? We need four lots of what? What is the target profit? Can someone put in the target profit? Just the target profit I'm after. Okay, oh yeah, 28,000 pounds per, per year. Yep, I quite agree. I'm just gonna do it a slightly different way because I'm doing it per, per quarter. Yep, thanks, Eleanor, and thanks, Sophia. If you wanted to do this um, separately for each, you would come out with the same answer. But what I'm doing is adding the four lots. So this is the fixed costs here per quarter. Okay, and this is the target profit here per quarter. And what I'm doing is I'm putting them in a nice set of brackets and then timesing them all by four. Okay, so I'll do 14,500 plus 7,000, which comes to 21,500. And I'll times that all by four. So I've got to get that top part of the line becomes 86,000. So just move it to the left, equals 86,000. But the contribution is the same rate. Can someone type me what? So, yep, thanks, Margot. What is the contribution? Yeah, the contribution remains the same at 10. Brilliant. So it's 10 up here. Absolutely fantastic. Okay. So we divide this all by 10, or this by 10. So therefore we get 8,600 miles. But what we want to know is that we want to know what the total revenue is. So what do we times the total revenue by? Okay, so this is 8,600 miles. Okay, what do we times it by? What's the contribute? What's the yeah? Well, we've got the answer there straight away. So Elna, I'm I'm taking it. Did the eight thousand six hundred miles? Okay, I'm just going to. I haven't actually actually got too much room on my screen here, so I'm going to move to the left. So we're going to have eighteen pounds per mile. Okay, so if we go up here, we can see that the sales revenue here is eighteen pounds per mile times 8,600 miles, totals 154,800. And there we go, done well within the 14 minutes. I'm gonna press stop on record now, and then if anyone has any further questions, I'm happy to go through them. Brilliant. Right. Does anybody have any further questions? Okay, I want to start sharing my screen again. Um, if you haven't got, brilliant. Thank, Shay, thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Thanks, Michaela. Well done for your answers. 